Views architecture is based on the idea of coupled components. A component is a small piece of the UI that performs a single task. We combine these components into pages that eventually forms the full application. As an example, let's consider a simple task list app. We have a component that's responsible for adding a new task and one that's responsible for displaying all the tasks in our list. Each component is a self-contained unit of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Everything it needs to function is contained in the components file. A component can also be made up of multiple other components. For example, an active task can be its own component as well as a completed task. Components can also communicate with each other and share data or get data from an external resource like Firebase. In the first app lesson, we learned that components use the .view extension. The .view extension is a custom file format that view understands. It knows a view file is a component and what to look for inside it. We also learned that a view file, typically, consists of three types of language blocks. The template block that defines the HTML markup of the component. The script block, where we maintain the data and logic for the template. And the style block, which contains the styling for the markup in the template. The template and style blocks are known as the view, and the script block is known as the logic. All the blocks together is known as template syntax. .view files are typically stored in a separate folder, like source, components. The root app component wraps other components in our application and exists as the app.view file in the source folder of our projects. Up until now, we've been using the root app component to explain View's fundamental concepts. Typically though, it's only used to register other components and display them on certain conditions or when routing. Components are part of the View framework. A browser can't understand them or process their contents. When we run the development server or build the application for production, Webpack and the view loader will parse the code and extract the three blocks. Then, it pipes them through other loaders like Babel or SCSS if necessary and assemble them into the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that a browser can understand. The great thing is that Vue takes care of this whole process for us so we don't have to worry about it. As mentioned before, a component is just a view file that contains the three language blocks. Let's go ahead and create a new file in the components directory and call it greeting message.view. The file name can use Pascal case, camel case, kebab case, or snake case, but it's convention to use Pascal case. Inside the new component, add a template block and a heading with some static text. At the moment, the message won't be rendered in the browser because this component is not connected with the rest of the application. To connect it, we follow a simple three-step process. Step 1 is to import the component into another component that's connected to the rest of the application. If there aren't any, we import it into the root app component. Step 2 is where we register the component in the config object. And Step 3 is where we instantiate the component in the template block by using its custom tag. Because we don't have any other component that's already connected, we'll use the root app component. To import a component, we use the import from statement at the top of the script block. As a side note, the view CLI uses Webpack as its bundler. Webpack understands what a view file is, so we don't have to specify the extension in our import statement. For the path, we use standard path navigation. As an example, let's import our new greeting message component in the app.view file script block. We start with the current directory, then go into components, and then the file. To register imported components, we specify them in the components option in the config object. We can use the ES6 shorthand syntax where the object's key and value is the same. As an example, we'll register the greeting message component we imported.
All right, now that view knows about the component, we can create an instance of it in the template block. We do this by using the component's name as a custom HTML tag, which can be a self-closing tag or an open and close one. View allows us to use either Pascal case or kebab case for our tags. However, Pascal case tags doesn't comply with the World Wide Web Consortium's rules for custom tag names. You can use whichever one you prefer, but try to stay consistent throughout the project. As an example, let's replace the div in our template with an instance of the greeting message component. If we run the example in the browser, we'll see the greeting message from the component. As we mentioned earlier, components can be made up of other components. We follow the same process as before, but instead of importing it into the root app component, we'll import it into the component we want to nest in. As an example, we'll create another component called component A. To keep things simple, our new component will have a paragraph with its name and some styling. Don't worry about the CSS right now, we cover styling later on in the series. Now, let's import, register, and instantiate our new component in greetingmessage.view. If we save and go to the browser, we'll see the big heading from the greeting component, as well as the nested component, in blue. In the next video, we'll learn how to pass data from one component to another with props. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.